So today I've had an interesting problem posed to me where I was being asked to create an image library within SharePoint where our files are automatically tagged and classified based on what's in the image. And for that, I'm going to investigate today AI Builder and the image processing actions that we have in there. So the problem that I have then is I have built a image library in SharePoint as a document library uh, that is going to contain my images. Now my images are going to contain or hold various properties on there for things like the height and the width, maybe some keywords. Uh, but what I want is an auto description of those images because potentially I'm going to be putting a lot of images into this library. And I don't want to have to go and classify and describe what each of these pictures is individually. I want some automation to go and do this for me. So here I am in SharePoint. Let's just zoom in a little bit, uh, just to make that a little bit bigger. And what I've got is a document library created in, in SharePoint. On that document library, I've added the image content type. So this is a built-in SharePoint content type that already has things like description, picture height, width, keywords, and so on. So I've not had to go and create all of these myself. Because I've uploaded a picture that contains what's called EXIF data, uh, it's automatically set things like the picture height, the width, some keywords, when it was taken, who it was taken by. It contains some metadata of its own. And that has been automatically put into SharePoint. But what I'm missing is this field in the middle, which is called description. And what I want to go in there is an actual description of what is in that image. And as I mentioned earlier, I don't want to do this manually. I want some automation that means that I can upload hundreds of these uh, images into this library and they are all going to be uh, automatically described so that I can then use that for searching or retrieving the images that I want to go and, look, uh, go and use. So how do we go about this? Now, what I've done is I've already created the basics of a uh, Cloudflow to come and help us do this. What I'm using here is for a selected file because for the purpose of this demo, I want to be able to trigger this flow myself. If I was doing this in a production environment, i.e. I actually wanted this to do exactly what I wanted it to do, then I would change this for when a file is created so that when a new file is added into my document library, it's going to automatically run and go and apply the metadata. But I want a little bit more control just for now. So what I've got in here is I've got my for a selected file, I've got get file property. So all I'm doing is getting the information that I need to know about the file. Now let's start to build out our flow because what do I need to do? I need to fire this through a, an AI model to go and look at that image and try and understand what is actually coming out of it. So I've come into my AI builder and if I just go and search for image, then what I've got in the middle here is generate a description of an image. You know what, that sounds exactly like what I want to put back into SharePoint. I want to get the description, then go and put it back into my library. So if I go and click on there, and it only really needs one thing, it just needs the image. Now the problem that I have is that for a selected file, get uh, when a, a file is created or even get file properties does not give me the physical file that I need to go and pass into this model. So I need to put another step in before I actually get to my generate description to give it the information that it needs. So I need to give it the file content. So I'm going to come to add an action. I'm going to use my SharePoint connector and then I'm going to get the file content. And so within my get file content, let's just give it the address. So this happens to be my marketing site and my file identifier. I know that because of my previous two steps. So I can either use the 
uh, the ID that comes from for a selected file, or I'm going to use the identifier that I get from get file properties. So that tells it, it tells the get file action which file I need to go and get the binary uh, representation of. Then if I go and pop that into here, let's go and add the file content in as my uh, as my content, and let's go and press save. Okay, so I've just saved it there just so that if anything does happen, then I can come back to it. Let's come and add one more step at the bottom of this, which is update file properties. Because the description that I get back from my AI builder model, I want to go and put back onto my document library and onto that particular uh, doc file so that I can get the description. So marketing, select my image gallery and give it the ID of what I want to go and update. And here's my description. And then if I go and look at my generate description of an image dynamic content, then description is one of those key pieces of information that I get back. So let's go and press save on there. Okay, I'm going to come over into SharePoint. Let's go and run this against this picture and see what happens. So let's come to the three dots. Let's come to automate and let's select describe image. That's the name of my flow. Okay, so there we go, it's running. Let's just drop back one. We can see here that it's running. Let's go and have a look what's happening. Okay, so it's got this, uh, got the file, it's got the file properties, and I can go through and just look at the dynamic content and make sure that I'm happy with all of that. I am. Um, it's going to get file content. If I go and click the uh, click to download, then what it will show me is the full binary representation of that file, which looks absolutely lovely. I will assume that that is the correct uh, the correct thing there. Um, but my generate description of an image has failed. And to be honest, the message that you get back from the AI model doesn't really tell you anything. What I have found is that there is a size limit on the size of the file that I can pass into this, uh, into this AI model in order for it to be able to analyze. And that limit that I found so far is four meg. If I come back to my document uh, to my document library I can see here that this file is 10.7 meg so it exceeds that limit so just to prove that actually that uh, there is that limit I'm going to come and upload one more file and this file is a small uh, this one's a small file this one's one that we've used for the uh, for the web and let's come and automate again describe the image and let's run it let's come back again this time it succeeded. And if I come, to back, come back to my library, I can see that it's added the description for me, a man and a woman looking at a computer screen. I think that's fairly accurate. Uh, so I need to do something with my large images now to make this work because I, uh, I don't want to risk or take away the fact that I've got these large high quality images being stored in my image library but I still want my AI model to be able to go and categorize it, describe it, so I can then have my, uh, I can upload a bulk and know that this is all going to work. So I'm gonna make a small change to my flow. Now, this is where some of the third party connectors that you have within Power Automate becomes really, really useful. Now, one of my favorite connectors is from a company called Encodian. And if I come to Encodian, and I'm gonna do a few more videos and some of their stuff, because they do some really great actions in here. Uh, but on the Encodian action, I have compress an image. So if I just compress an image there, then I can now start to reduce the size of the file to a point where it can be easily passed through my AR model and still uh, categorized without me having to go and uh, do any any manual resizing with that image. So let's go and put my file content into the compressed image. 
let's go and select my image type. So this is a JPEG. Now there are limitations to what I can, um, the types of file that I can use here. I may need to do some work later on to automatically detect whether it's a JPEG or a GIF that I'm working with, but I'm gonna stick with a JPEG for now. So I'm gonna take my compressor image. I'm going to take the outputs of my compressor image because I don't need to go and create a new physical file for this. I'm going to take the file content from my compressed version and I'm going to pass it straight into my generate description of an image AI model. And then I'm going to use the description to go and update it. So let's go and press save on there, just so that you're aware of what's in the picture. So this is the picture that I'm going to be trying to get it to describe. So a team of rowers on a lake um, on quite a sunny day by the looks of it. Let's see what we uh, what the model makes of it. So let's go and run it manually once more. Automate, describe the image, and let's press continue. Okay, it's running this time, let's go and have a look. We should see it ticking through. So we've got the selected file, we've got the file properties, we've got the file content. We've passed it over to Encodia and said, encrypt, uh, sorry, compress this for me. So it shrinks the file and it gives me that content back again as a binary that I can then pass into the generate a description of an image action. And it looks like it's a group of people rowing a boat. That's looking good. It's 62% confident. And it's come back with a number of tags that could be assigned to that as well. So you know what, I could actually use that for something else. I've then gone and updated the file properties. Let's just come back to my library, give it a quick refresh. And there we go, it's now got my description on there. So using the AI model for generating image description is extremely useful as long as we are within those boundaries. But Using the likes of Encodian, and I'm sure there are other um, actions or connectors out there that do this uh, similar sort of thing. Encodian are my personal favorites. Um, I've been able to take that image without manually shrinking it down into uh, to get under the threshold of what uh, of what the AR model actually wants to, to work with, i.e. 4 meg. Um, I've managed to compress it. I've managed to take that and push it through the AR model and get a quite a good description of what that image is back and then use that to go and tag my uh, tag my files. So there we go. I hope you, I hope that was useful for you, um, and I hope that me putting this into the context of the problem that I faced when I was trying to do this is has been useful to help contextualise it as well. If you do have questions, if you want to know more, or if you want uh, or have ideas about other videos that you'd like me to do, please do post in the comments. I will happily um, answer anything and try and uh, meet any, any requests. But for now, I hope you all have a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you're finding this useful. And I look forward to speaking to you again in the next video.